Guys, you need to be building muscle. Now, you might think, well, I'm trying to lose weight. What does building muscle have to do with losing weight? Well, yes, sir! What's good, y'all? It's Jay, and today I want to talk to you guys about why weight loss plateaus occur and how you can break through them, all right, guys? So let's get right into it. First things first that you have to understand, if you have a weight loss plateau, to lose weight or to lose fat, you have to be in a caloric deficit, right? So if you've reached a plateau in your weight loss journey and you will lose weight and it stops suddenly, then you are no longer in a caloric deficit. That's all it means. You're no longer in a caloric deficit and you have to change certain things and tweak certain things about your activity levels, about your eating, in order for you to therefore, again, achieve a caloric deficit so you can continue to lose weight and continue to lose fat. To be in a caloric deficit, all you need is calories in versus calories out. How many calories are you consuming on a daily basis? And how many calories are you burning on a daily basis? Which will include your metabolism, how many calories you're burning through your metabolism, how many calories you're burning through your actual exercise routines, and how many calories are you burning through your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is just how many calories you're burning doing regular things like walking around during the day or standing while you're cooking and things of that nature, right? And lastly, your thermic effect of food. Thermic effect of food is how many calories you're burning through the digestion process of your foods, right? Your body ramps up your metabolism to burn calories when you're digesting certain foods. So those things go into the calories out portion, the calories in portion is just everything that you're consuming. So now that we got that out the way, everything that we're talking about today, guys, is gonna be based on making sure you're achieving the goal of a calorie deficit. That's all these tips is for, making sure you achieve a calorie deficit. So we're gonna go through all the tips, let's get into it. Number one, you need to start lowering and or tracking your calories, guys. If you're not tracking your calories, you don't know how many calories you're eating, then you don't really know where you are to put yourself in a calorie deficit. You don't know if you're eating more some days than others and stuff like that. You need to track it so you just know where you are on a daily basis. So if you're at the 2000 maintenance, you know, okay, I have to eat this 1700, this 1800, whatever's lower to get my deficit on a daily basis. So you need to be tracking calories and you need to be lowering them, all right? So if you're, if you're not seeing weight loss progress anymore and you say you were already tracking it and you were eating 1700 um, and it stopped moving, well, then that means 1700 doesn't work anymore, right? If you lost enough weight, now you need to lower that 1700 even more. Maybe now you need to lower it to 1600. You know what I'm saying? You need to lower it to 1550, 1500 to continue to lose weight. The more weight you lose, the less you're going to have to eat to keep losing weight. Because eventually what used to be a caloric deficit is now going to turn into your maintenance calories once you've reached a new low weight. Number two, make sure you're increasing your protein intake and your vegetable intake. Now, there are two main reasons you wanna increase your protein intake. One, protein is gonna make you feel satiated, right? So protein is just gonna help you to feel full during your meals so you don't overeat as easily. It's gonna help you lower your calories without feeling like you're starving. Secondly, protein has a high thermic effect of food, right? So, like I said, thermic effect of food is just your body, how much it works to digest the foods that you're taking in, right? So your calorie burning goes up 20 to 30% when you're digesting protein, right? So it's, it's a much higher thermic effect of food than like carbs and fat, things like that, right? So if you're eating high levels of protein, you're literally burning more calories just by digesting your protein. And the reason I say to increase the vegetables is because you can eat a ton of vegetables and it will still be low calorie. So that you can eat super high volumes of vegetables and it still probably won't even make a dent in the amount of calories you've consumed for the day unless you've done a lot of things to vegetables like placed a lot of dressings on them and stuff like that to increase the calories. But overall, vegetables you can eat in high bulk and still be low calorie. Number three, doing 150 minutes of cardio every week. So if you haven't already started doing cardio 150 minutes every week, then you haven't done everything that you could do, right? So you're already counting your calories, right? And you're not trying to lower your calories anymore. Well, increase your exercise, right? Increase the amount of cardio that you're doing on a daily basis. Um, try to do cardio 30 minutes, five days a week, right? And now doing cardio this much isn't just you know, going out for sprints and only jump or open up, stuff like that. Now, of course, it can include the regular cardio, but sometimes it could just be taking walks for those 30 minutes in a day or taking uh, power walks or fast walks, you know, or light jogs, doing things of that nature. 
But yeah, just increase your cardio, get it up to 150 minutes per week. If it's hard to get up to 150 minutes per week, that is perfectly okay. Just increase your cardio gradually um, over time. If you need to start with five minutes every day and start with five minutes every day until you could reach up to 30 minutes in a day and then until you could reach up to doing it five days a week or however you want to split it. But just gradually increase your cardio until you get to that 150 minutes per week. Increase the intensity of your cardio gradually too and then see what changes that brings to you in your body as well. Number four, you need to be building muscle. Guys, you need to be building muscle. Now, you might think, well, I'm trying to lose weight. What does building muscle have to do with losing weight? Well, long story short, when you build muscle, you are also increasing your metabolic rate. You're increasing your metabolism, right? So if you have muscles, if you have a lot of muscle, your body is going to burn more calories. Your muscle burns more calories than your fat will. So if you have more muscle, you're gonna have a faster metabolism. You have a faster metabolism, that means you've increased the calories out portion of the equation, which means you're more likely to be in that caloric deficit. So guys, please make sure when you are doing this whole journey, you're not slacking off in your resistance training. Make sure you're doing your resistance training. Make sure you're doing your hypertrophy rep ranges, six to 12 reps. We're challenging 12, either at failure or close to it. And yeah, just work on building that muscle, guys. Number five, and I feel like a lot of people already noticed it, but in case you don't, drink a lot of water. You don't wanna be drinking your calories, all right, guys? You wanna drink a lot of water. Drinking a lot of water is gonna to help to flush out your system. It's gonna help you get rid of extra water weight because now as you're getting extra water, your body can get rid of the water that it was retaining now that it knows that it's getting more water. On top of that, the more water that you drink, the more it's gonna help you curb your hunger cravings, right, guys? So just drink water. Sometimes you're really thirsty when you think that you're hungry, so drink a lot of water. Don't drink your calories, but drink water to save calories and to also help with your hunger. Number six, increase NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Guys, just be more active. Just be more active, guys, literally. Look, I'm not talking about when you go to the gym and plan your workout routines and everything like that. I'm literally talking about doing things like opting to take the stairs instead of, instead of taking the elevator, walking more places throughout the day. If you're going to the store and you know the store is in walking distance, choose to walk to the store as opposed to driving to the store. Just choose minor things like that. If you're in the gym sitting every time during your rest periods, maybe stand up during your rest periods. Don't, don't sit down during it. Sometimes pace if you need to pace, do whatever. Make sure you're standing a lot more throughout the day, just moving a lot more. Me just moving my arms like this is me moving more than if I was just sitting back leaning on the wall and not doing anything. Increase those non-exercise activities, guys. All right, so do those things. You're gonna gradually burn more calories throughout the day too. So again, increase the calories out portion of the equation. We've been through everything in terms of helping you hit the caloric deficit. This last thing right here is literally, literally, literally a last resort. So if you've tried everything else and none of those things have worked for you, then you could try this, but make sure you try every single thing that I stated first before you come to this. So what you need to do for this seventh step is you're gonna need to eat a little more. Now, increasing the calories is not going to make you lose any more weight or make you lose any more fat, right? But what I'm trying to do when I say eat a little more is I want you to get your metabolism back in order, right? So if you're losing weight and you were losing weight too aggressively, then you could also be dramatically slowing down your metabolism. If you're dramatically slowing down your metabolism, then your body's not burning that many calories on its own anymore when you're at rest. So if you lose weight too fast and you feel like you've lowered your calories as much as you humanly possibly can without completely starving yourself, right? There's only so much you could lower your calories, right guys? If you've done all of that, then you might need to increase it a little more to reset your metabolism, reset everything, and then go back and cut again with a smaller caloric deficit, with more resistance training, using all the tips that I talked about earlier. Use all these tips, guys, to help you get to your goals, to help you break your weight loss plateaus, to help you get to where you wanna be. If you did enjoy the video, if I did help you at all, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I'm Jay, and I'm out.